G'day folks, welcome back to another video tutorial talking about chemical thermodynamics. Uh, and we've talked about a little bit so far, we introduced some new terms, heat and temperature, systems, surroundings, distinguish between state functions, path functions, endoexothermic, and slowly working on defining some of those other terms in blue there. And we got to enthalpy in the previous video tutorial. We talked about the first law of thermodynamics along the way as well. Um, and I'm going to introduce the coffee cup calorimeter, but we might look at a quick problem, I think, which is a bomb calorimetry problem. Just a, an example of how you might crunch the numbers with this kind of uh, problem. I talked about the idea of a coffee cup calorimeter in the last video tutorial. At least I, I think I did. Um, just in case I didn't, here's, here's a reminder about what a coffee cup calorimeter might sound like. It's just kind of a silly name really, isn't it? But uh, the reason why we call it a coffee cup calorimeter is because once upon a time we used polystyrene, which was blown by CFCs, um, to drink our coffees. We seem to use cardboard cups these days. But anyway, once upon a time, we used polystyrene cups. And the reason why we use polystyrene cups is because they're really good insulators, yeah? And you can see in this example here, this is a picture. It's actually got two polystyrene cups there, one placed inside another. It makes a really good insulator. And if you want to do a chemical reaction inside that coffee cup, uh, and you put a little lid on, which is an insulated cover in its own right, and you stick a little thermometer um, down the guts of that, and you had uh, some sort of little stirrer, you can actually perform a chemical reaction in there. And if you can measure the change in temperature, and we said that a change in temperature is an indication of heat, and heat, we said, is a change in energy, or it's a transfer of energy, then we would actually be able to measure the enthalpy of the system. Okay, so this is uh, the the coffee cup calorimeter, and um, uh, it's it's certainly a, a kind of a kind of device you should be familiar with uh, in this topic. So just remember, enthalpy is actually different to the change in internal energy um, when we're operating at a constant pressure. It's far more convenient to talk about the change in enthalpy than the change in internal energy as a general rule, which is, which is uh, you know, why we tend to use it. Having said that, you can see at the bottom of the page here, I'm saying that this, this difference is most significant when a gas is involved, okay? It, for solution phase stuff, delta H is actually pretty close to being the same as delta U, but you know, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a distinction you should be aware of. With respect to calorimetry, and I think I'll work through a problem coming up with bomb calorimetry, we'll get to that. We, we can use this expression here where the Q of the reaction, so Q is heat, so the heat of a reaction equals the negative value of the heat capacity of the calorimeter multiplied by the change in temperature. So heat capacity is given this label C. You might see it as a capital C or a lowercase c, depending on which textbook you use. We'll have a look at some different um, C values. When a sample is combusted in, say, something like a bomb calorimeter, the rise in temperature of the water uh, can be used to determine the overall heat of the sample. The heat gained by the calorimeter equals the heat liberated by that combustion reaction. And so we can, we can say that uh, the heat gained by the calorimeter uh, would be equal to the heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. Okay, so we can perform reactions, if you like, to determine how much heat a calorimeter might absorb when a chemical reaction takes place in there. And we know how much energy is absorbed for every degree of temperature that you might see increase or decrease if it was um, an endothermic reaction, of course. And of course, the heat of the sample is equal to the negative of the heat change in the calorimeter. 
The specific heat capacity of any substance, which is usually given the label C, is the heat required to raise the temperature of a unit mass, usually a gram, of a substance by one Kelvin. And so the units given to heat capacity are joules per Kelvin per gram, or capital J, K to the minus one, G, little g to the minus one. Okay, remember, it's really important to have our units correct for topics like this. So the heat change in joules, remember heat is energy, so it's measured in joules, equals the mass in grams times the heat capacity times the change in the temperature. Remember that a rise in temperature occurs in an exothermic reaction and corresponds to a negative value of delta H. Water has a very well-known value for its heat capacity and actually has a, a pretty high value for its heat capacity and it's 4.18 joules per kelvin per gram. Here's a sample problem and in this problem we're going to look at, uh, it's a bomb calorimetry problem in this case here, where two grams of the rocket fuel hydrazine is combusted in a bomb calorimeter and the temperature rise is measured to two decimal places of 23.12 to 28.17. Okay, so that looks to me to be a, an increase in temperature. It's gone up by 5.05 degrees Celsius, which is of course the same as 5.05 .05 Kelvin. So one Celsius is equal to one Kelvin. In these kinds of problems, you don't really have to convert between Celsius and Kelvin because what you're subbing into the equation is delta T. Okay, if you're subbing in a raw value for the temperature, it would have to be in Kelvin. But when you're talking about delta T, it doesn't matter if it's Kelvin or Celsius because it's the same. Now in the question, it also gives us the heat capacity. Heat capacity of the calorimeter is 7.70 kilojoules per Kelvin. In other words, for every degree of temperature that that calorimeter uh, heats up, it's absorbed 7.7 .7 kilojoules of energy. So this question is twofold. What is the heat of the reaction for the combustion of two grams of this sample? And what is the heat of the, re of the reaction for one mole of the stuff? So we take our formula, which we looked at earlier in this video tutorial, where the heat is determined by the heat capacity of the calorimeter multiplied by the change in the temperature. Now in the bomb calorimeter, we actually have a value for the heat capacity of the overall calorimeter. So this has already been worked out for us. We don't need to take into consideration the mass of the water. Usually when you're doing a coffee cup calorimetry, uh, calculation, you do have to take that into account. Sometimes with a bomb calorimeter, you need to as well. In this case, we've been given a value for the heat capacity of the overall calorimeter. So it's really as simple as multiplying this value by the change in the temperature. And so if we convert that uh, to joules per Kelvin, we've got 7,700 multiplied by the change in temperature, put into your calculator and convert to kilojoules. Actually, I don't know why we converted to joules and then back to kilojoules again, but we did, and you can see how that's done. That, of course, was the energy absorbed by the calorimeter, and you can see that it's a positive value. We know that the heat of the reaction is the same in magnitude, but opposite in sign. And so the heat of the reaction is minus 38.9 kilojoules. The second part of the question simply asked, well, what's the heat of the reaction if you had uh, a mole of this material? So it's really just a case of taking that ratio of 2 over 32.05, which is the molar mass of hydrazine, and doing the conversion. So taking the heat of the reaction, dividing it by that ratio, and getting a value of minus 623 kilojoules per mole. Now, was this delta H or delta U? It's a bomb calorimeter, guys, so it's going to be delta U. Remember, this reaction was performed at a constant volume, but no doubt the pressure inside that bomb calorimeter changed. Okay, so this is a delta U problem, not a delta H problem. If it was a coffee cup calorimeter, it would be more likely that we were measuring a change in the enthalpy.